on the number one breakfast show in the country. Morning at NTV, I do have Christopher Kahwa. He's coming in from Mushroom Hill. He's not alone. He's flanked by a very, very beautiful lady. That is Rebecca Kaitesi. She's also from Mushroom Hill. They'd like to talk about agriculture for youth economic empowerment during this COVID-19 pandemic. But what is Mushroom Hill and what do they clamor to achieve in that regard? They're also scholars of the MasterCard Foundation in that regard. Very good morning, Christopher and Rebecca. Good morning, Good morning. I'll start with you, Kahua. What is the Mushroom Hill? Uh, thank you, Romeo. Mm. Uh, good morning, viewers. My name is Carl Christopher. Mm. I'm a student at Makere University. All right. I'm pursuing a bachelor's degree in journalism and communication. Indeed. Uh, so, Romeo, to start with... I can with see the future is already bright. <laughs> Indeed, I guess I'm <laughs> in the right place. Yeah. Uh, to start with, mm. a Mushroom Hill is a social venture that is located in Fort Potro City, All right. Kamganbi Village. Mm. Uh, here, Mushroom Hill targets pupils mm. who are going to school and we working in through households mm. whereby we train such households, mm. we train the heads, the parents how to grow mushrooms. I, I also avail them with spawns and ensure ready market for their output. Mm. Yeah. Do you have an addition to that, Rebecca? Yeah, we train these pupils mm. in, uh, in, uh, in like nutrition. Like where do you find them? Do they find you? Do you go out to them? How do you, you know, just, you know, how do you talk to their parents? Where do you find their parents? How do you assess that this is a parent that we need to talk to? They are grappling and they need such skills. The criteria you follow as Mushroom Hill to target the beneficiaries. Uh, as mm. Mushroom Hill, we targeted a school in Kamiganbi village, mm. uh, St. Chisto Primary School. Yes. Here, we looked at the number of pupils that mm. didn't return to school. Okay. Uh, in this school, uh, it had a total of 685 pupils, but out of these, mm. only 365 were able to return to school. Mm. So we are looking at this number that remain behind. Mm. Yeah, what was the biggest constitution of that number in terms of gender? The number that was actually sidelined, that didn't come back to the school setting. Were they girls? Were they boys? Uh, mostly mm. girls, but the project is targeting both genders. Both genders. Yes. And uh, what were some of the precipitating factors leading to these uh, dropout rates in this school? Uh, most of these mm. parents are engaged in ma maize growing. I see. Uh, and you know how things have been. Kenya blocked the export of maize. Indeed. Mm. And uh, Aflatoxins, yes. Yes, and the prices went down. Mm. So these parents could not afford school fees for their children. Mm. Yes. Mm. And, and? All and right. with that, we come up with mushroom growing since mushrooms are easy to grow. And they're not banned in Kenya. We can still do trade. Yes. All right. Yeah, they mature very fast. Mm. And these people will not go away from the maize growing, mm. but they'll keep growing their maize since mm. mushrooms are home-based mm. and they can be done alongside other activities. How is this project different from the others? Because I've had Onapa, I've had other, you know, MasterCard scholars coming in here. One was using sweet potatoes to turn them into mandazi. Another was actually using croilers to help single mothers. Mm. Another one was Chomwa, was targeting only young boys with some skills in that regard to help them navigate the onset of this COVID-19 pandemic. But you, as the Mushroom Hill, what makes your project largely different and so special? Uh, for Mushroom Hill, mm. it's so unique starting from its mode of operation. Mm. Uh, first of all, here we are working with schools, going children. So here and for Mushroom Hill, first of all, you can look at our product. Mm. It's so unique. Mushrooms, actually, Romeo can tell you that mm. I one time went to a restaurant and I intentionally asked for mushroom hill sauce because yeah. mushrooms, I, I saw on their menu and there was mushroom sauce. Mm. So I was like, can I have this? I read mm. for it. Right. But I was so surprised that the waiter told me we don't have it in place. But they had it on the menu. They had it on the menu. See. So yeah. you can see that already mushrooms make our project unique. All right. There's so a demand already, but uh -huh. lesser supply. Uh -huh. mm. Besides that, mm. it's so inclusive. Mm. You might find that the most NGOs, the other projects that do specify, let's say we're working with teenagers, mm. working with pregnant uh, mothers, mm. single mothers, but here Mushroom is so inclusive. Mm. Uh, we're working with pupils, their parents, besides that, mm. also other community members. Mm. Remember, we need them with the chain of supply. Mm. So that makes Mushroom so unique. All right, I'd like to know how the people have been affected by this COVID-19 pandemic, leading to people like yourself, Mushroom Hill, coming out and saying, okay, we are seeing a big, big demand. We are seeing so many problems in these areas, and that's why we are stepping up. We want to know what 
is that dire situation that prompted this initiative or project? Let's start with you. Yeah, for hmm. example, me, Rebecca, I'm a MasterCard Foundation scholar. Unde. And if not this scholarship, I think I would have returned to school after the pandemic. How so? Yeah, hmm. so this inspired us to look at other children. Why wouldn't you have gone back to the school setting if it weren't for the MasterCard Foundation? Because my parents could not afford it. I see. Yes. Uh, so we put ourselves in the shoes of these children, hmm. these pupils who are basically uh, not having this support. Hmm. And we came up with this project to support these children, mm. yes. Are you also worried that uh, many other students out there who might not be, you know, or you might not get a chance to receive help coming in from Mushroom Hill, might not get back into the school setting, largely because of school fees? Yeah. Is it widespread, the problem of poverty now? Yeah, it's mm. widely spread, mm. yes. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, Kahwa, let's talk about uh, how do you plan to use this MasterCard Foundation support? Um, at this juncture, I can say that I'm so happy, hmm. and I think ma uh, the MasterCard support has come in the right time. You know, this is the time that most people are struggling with finances. Hmm. Uh, the economy has been crippled. So here, uh, you know, Romeo, uh, we as the youth, we have many ideas that we can bring on ground and help other people. Hmm. But you may have an idea without financial support. So it is any way you'll bring it on mm. ground. It will just remain in your mind, mm. and you can't have it on paper. Mm. So yeah, for, uh, the MasterCard support, uh, where we are planning to, to start mm. our, our venture activities, mm. where you have to first uh, training a mushroom training facility, that's be like a demonstration farm. We also have to recruit our beneficiaries. So yeah, as, we, as she told you, we are partnering with some school in Fort Potter City, mm. uh, and through this school, we have to get our beneficiaries, our first beneficiaries. We also mm. are planning to start our production and then mm. go into the market. When you talk to these parents and the learners, what do they say are their most basic needs during this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, right now, uh, you might find, uh, you know there is UPE. Indeed. Uganda Primary University Education. Mm -hmm. So, but on top of UPE, you find that such people can't afford some scholastic materials, mm. uniforms. I see. See, they're struggling, though they're being uh, paid free, to free school fees. So uh, I can tell you that right now, their most basic needs are scholastic materials, money also are school fees, mm. and uniforms. Sanitary parts for the young girls as they go back to the school setting, issues yeah. to do with soap and all the basic needs that they might need. All right, uh, uh, and you, Rebecca, what did you find out in the field? Yeah. the needs of the parents and also the students alike. Speak to the students now. What uh, are their needs? Mm. Uh, most of their needs are basic. I don't differ much from my Especially colleagues. the girls. Mm. Yeah, sanitary towels. You mm. find that girls fail to go to school just because it's their time in the month. Mm. So because of lack of sanitary towels, they stay at home mm. until that period goes. Then they return to school. Mm. Yeah, so as Mushroom Hill, we partnered with very many organizations, mm. uh, for example, the MasterCard Foundation alumni mm. at Brock, Uganda. I see. Uh, this provides scholastic materials to school-going children, and they have given us green lights. They'll mm. provide these materials to our students. I see. What are some of the challenges you've encountered while trying to streamline these activities courtesy of the Mushroom Hill? What are some of those challenges, Rebecca? Uh, some of the challenges were we had to reach out to different households, mm. uh, find out their willingness to engage in mushroom growing. Uh, you find that uh, most of them are willing and mm. ready to start mushroom growing mm. once they hit ground. Yeah. Uh, but some of them really need to be inspired more to, mm. to engage in this activity. Inspired more to engage, as in how? With some financial resources? Uh, some people look at these mm. projects as, I don't know, I think they have had projects failing that side. Mm. Yeah, so they have not yet trusted us mm. so much. Yeah, but the biggest number of our beneficiaries mm. are willing and ready to start. Kawa, well, how has it been hard to convince these parents to make that shift all the way from maize growing onto mushroom growing, if you will? Uh, as we told you before, Romeo, mm. that our, our target group mm. are maize farmers. Mm. So uh, we come with mushroom growing, not changing, just that, not, not changing the lifestyle. Mm. You know, this is a home-based activity. I see. So you can do your maize growing alongside mushroom growing. Mm. However, this, uh, the mushrooms aim at increasing or 
widening mm. someone's source of income. I yet. see. Uh, and maybe to add on, on the on the question for uh, Kaitesi mm. about the challenges, mm. you know, when you reach out to such a people, uh, they believe that any NGO or a project they see that is coming to work with them, they are financially motivated. I see. So they feel like <laughs> they must give us tips, uh, like money tips, you know? Oh, yeah. So if you organize, like, for a training session, they'll come hoping for snacks, drinks, such a thing. So, <laughs> and at times, we as the youth, when you also don't have that enough money. Mm. You're working in your things. small miniature ways to advance uh -huh. social services to these individuals. Need. I understand. All right. Largely, is it the first time your project is receiving social venture challenge uh, funding, if you will? Yeah. Kahwa. It is. it is our first time to receive. I see. Yes. All right. Kahwa and Rebecca, many thanks for having made the time to speak to us right here on Morning at NTV. We wish you all the best in your new venture, the Mushroom Hill. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Indeed. And of course, you're still watching a Morning at 10 TV. This question has been put to a halt. Let's take a breather. Return shortly with another conversation that shall largely focus on forex trading, alternative sources of making some money.